I was born in a small Alabama town called Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> and, uh, but most of my stories actually come to me from my Ain't True and my Uncle Faults. Now, my Ain't True and Uncle Faults actually live in a trailer park called Big Fib Trailer Park Cul-de-Sac. It is a trailer park that is in the shape of a cul-de-sac in a town called Big Fib, which is way down south of here. I mean, it's, way, it's down there off the coast of Factual. <laughs> in fact, if you leave Factual and you head due south, you will pass Big Fib on your way to Bald Faced. <laughs> and if you get to Bald Faced, then obviously you've gone too far. <laughs> I called Uncle Fultz on the phone recently to tell him that I had just discovered that cul-de-sac in French literally means bottom of the bag. And he said, hmm, I thought cul-de-sac meant turn around or stay. Over. <laughs> He says over because he thinks his cordless phone works like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> I said, Uncle Fultz, you don't have to say over after every time you're done talking. And there was this long pause. <laughs> I said, hello? He goes, uh, didn't know you was done talking. Over. <laughs> and then he just started into his story. And his story was about the origin of trailer parks. He said, Many, many moons ago. But then Aunt True interrupted him from the other room. She said, there ain't been but one moon fault. Which I, know sounds, I know it sounds a little crazy, but it's them. So it is. <laughs> Here's the story. Many, many moons ago, or under the same moon a long time ago, <laughs> there was only one park. And all the parks we have today have their origin, their genesis, and what we now know of as Pangea Park. <laughs> Which is a terrible name for a park, ain't it? I wouldn't want to walk my child or carry my dog around in a place called Pangea, but that's not a thing. <laughs> the point is, all the parks we have today began there. They lived there next to one another in peace and perfect harmony. What does that mean? That means that Theme Park and Water Park lived right next door to Dog Walking Park and Trailer. <laughs> that is, until the Great Asunder descended. When the Great Asunder came down, it brainwashed all those different types of parks. Small wars broke out for petty reasons. You ask Uncle Fault about it, and he'll say, Listen here, at one point, certain factions of theme and water got together, enacted psychological warfare on dog walking. That's how joggers got created. <laughs> World's most annoying weapon, you ask me, what with all them sweaty bits and that heavy breathing and things coming out the ears, what are they listening to? I don't trust them. <laughs> a trade park took one look at a jogger, said, I think nope, and rolled. <laughs> and listen, boy, if they weren't meant to flee, if trailers weren't meant to flee, Why'd the great manufacturer give them wheels? <laughs> they rolled and rolled, searching for a new identity, gradually developing the theory that if they had just stayed to fight, trailer parks might still have a place among all those fancier types of parks. <laughs> and that's why, to this day, people think that trailer park folk will just throw off a stained white t-shirt and fight you for no reason. Y'all, it's just part of our mythology. <laughs> Now, the group of trailers that got all the way down south toward Big Fib, they still felt the Great Asunder breathing down their neck, and that's why they circled up like a bunch of western wagons and got ready to fight, and they're still there today, just up on blocks, <laughs> fearful and suspicious of new ideas, because new ideas just might be the Great Asunder's novel way of infecting their minds. Hmm. Now, how'd that trailer park down there become the shape of a cul-de-sac? That's one of my favorite stories. When Uncle Faults was still five years old, those trailers were still in a giant circle. And that's how the kids would play back in those times. They would just run in circles all day, just running in circles, just getting ready to be NASCAR fans, and they go, just run in circles. <laughs> that is, until one night, miraculously, they say, two of those trailers just opened themselves up to the rest of the world. And that's important, you see. Because now those kids that live there today, they run, sure, but then they stop. And they look out that opening into the rest of the world like it's a portal into a new dimension. And they imagine. And they dream. What could be more miraculous than that? See, that's the thing about Big Fib Trailer Park cul-de-sac. You can enter it anytime you like, but in order to leave, you got to go out the way you came. And what's that mean? That means any time you visit my Aunt True and Uncle Faults, 
the first thing you've got to do before you re-enter your world is revisit somewhere you've already been. Mm. Ain't true uncle faults are strange people, living among even stranger people. But I swear, when the peculiar becomes familiar and safe, that's when you know that you love. Last time I visited him, I walked into the trailer. Aunt True took one look at me and she went, Boy, you lost too much weight. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> and then she walked into the kitchen and she poured a bunch of peas into a bowl that's cracked with an actual Band-Aid <laughs> over the crack. When I triangulate Aunt True's lack of tact and Uncle False's weird wit with the smell of peas in a bowl that's cracked with an actual Band-Aid over it, y'all, I know what I have found. It is one set of coordinates for Big Fib Trailer Park cul-de-sac, the place I will always think of as home.